it, you know, UFO, UAP phenomena right now is just like, it's so much bigger and mainstream than it's ever been. And with like the news that came out, the Pentagon acknowledging it, it just makes me so skeptical of the whole thing. Oh, yeah. You no, know, because you always. Truly amazing. It's like, what's there? Why? You know, back in the 50s and the 60s, it was like deny, deny, deny. And now it's okay. These things are here, so I automatically say, okay, whatever the the government's telling us, I'm gonna automatically assume the opposite. And, and listen, obviously they've trained us that way. I think at the end of the day, when you start looking at some of the stories that come out and how they're being uh, presented, especially with the with the Pentagon coming out and saying, hey, listen, UAPs are real. We're not sure where they come from. We're not sure what they're about. Um, they haven't showed any aggression. Um, and then you've got air. You got some of the uh, pilots from coast to coast, uh, up and down the coast of Florida, who uh, had the run-in with the, the gimbal, they call it. Mm-hmm. And then one of the other guys on the other coast had a run-in with um, uh, a UAP that they call the Tic Tac. So some of these vehicles are just so amazing. Um, as, as the one pilot that had talked about the event that took place off the coast of Florida, everybody said, well, isn't this classified information? Because you're about to tell. He goes, no, listen, it's a safety concern. He goes, when I initially witnessed this, we saw them on our radar, on our new uh, systems that we had, but really weren't sure what we were looking at. Wasn't sure if it was just background. And he goes, then we actually saw one, and it came between uh, this particular pilot and his co-pilot, who was his wingman, and actually split the plane, went between them. And it scared the pilot so bad, he said, I didn't know what it was. It was a circle with a square inside. And it flew by the, it got so close to our aircraft, because my concern was not necessarily on on what's classified, but what's safe for us flying in the air. He goes, if we hit one of these things, they said, we believe that we're going to be, you know, the ones, hit. oh, look, they they crashed because he wasn't a good pilot versus um, something hit the, hit the plane. So mm-hmm. he said, I want to make everybody aware of that. So that's, he goes, I didn't care whether it was classified or not. I was going to come out and explain to the people that this is a safety issue. It has nothing to do with, you know, aliens. He said, I'm, I don't know. That's what it was. What do you think that Tic Tac really is? Like what, my opinion on it has changed, but what do you think it is? I think it's definitely something that the U.S. has. As yeah. long as I've been following the, this trend of UFOs, um, I've never seen that Tic Tac in any photographs or pe- had people talk about it. Um, what's interesting about this is that, you know, obviously the Tic Tac takes two different looks. If it's coming at you, it looks round. And if it's going, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? If it goes, flies at an angle by you, you can actually tell that it's a long projectile with nothing, no wings, nothing on it to the outside. So... And it's obviously something that's anti-gravity, has the ability. I've heard that some of the individuals talk about within the federal government that DARPA and some of these other groups are 400 years ahead of time. So obviously looking at a vehicle like that, if it's 400 years ahead of us, technology-wise, then it's doing some amazing things. Yeah, one of the theories of it being time travelers is very interesting to me. Like it could, because they they kind of like appear and reappear out of like like out of they're not it doesn't seem like it's real matter like you know what i mean it seems like not only is it there's no real photographs of it like you would think if there was something like this we would be drowning in photographs and videos of it right but we're not right so it's if if that's the case it's almost like whoever is maneuvering these things has control of that and they have the ability to manipulate light, manipulate uh, space time, and avoid detection like that. So, just like the idea of it being time travelers to me almost makes more sense than anything. Well, it's crazy too because when you when you think about this, for the most part, like, like let's look at Skinwalker Ranch real quick. They're talking about these portals that are opening up, and they actually believe. And, and listen, when I originally heard this. I kind of chuckled at it and thought, you know, why are the why are the, is this group of people saying this? But they talked about Bigfoot, or they talk about Skinwalkers coming through these portals. Well, watching the skin the uh, Skinwalker Ranch program that's on TV right now, a couple of nights ago, they were trying an experiment. They're trying to shoot these rockets up into space because there's some sort of phenomena about a mile above the the actual property. And they're trying to figure out what this this phenomena is. Every time they shoot something up into it, it gets like bounced off of it. During the process of this, they've got cameras running all over the place, and they've actually picked up some lights, and they actually refer to them as portals. They're asking the question, are these portals that these, these uh, creatures are able to pop back and forth from? Now, I initially kind of chuckled at some of this because I thought, you know, why would Bigfoot 
why would the government be interested in keeping Bigfoot or Hairy Man or Sasquatch a secret from everybody? It didn't make sense to me originally. I said, this doesn't make sense. I watched a program the other night, and they said, listen, they believe, and this, and this is a program called um, uh, Exhibition Bigfoot. Dr. Uh, Moya Alexander, who's on there, is a leading professional in, in paleontology uh, and information with regards to animals, especially gorillas and uh, other uh, animals that walk upright. So she, she began to evaluate this whole program and started looking at it and found these lights, these portals, um, these orbs were floating around. And I started to kind of chuckle, but you start seeing them on TV, and she doesn't understand what she's looking at. Now, keep in mind, too, as a doctor, she can't lie. If she lies about anything that she is involved with, she runs the risk of losing her, her medical license across the board. So when she comes out and starts talking about some of these events that are taking place, you kind of scratch your head. But she said that one of the interesting things was that, and that she believed, that Bigfoot had the ability to cloak himself. Well, when I started thinking about it, the federal government would love to know how that's happening. And whether it's happening with his fur or his hair, um, they're really not sure, but they definitely believe that he's somehow cloaking himself. And watching the program, they were able to actually videotape some material where they saw a shadow, but no actual body. And they looked at it from 10 different angles, trying to figure out what it was. And it more or less proved their point with regards to there is something bigger that's going on. Is, is it truly time travel? Is it, are they using these portals to, um, you know, travel around the world? Also, you know, all the, all the other planes that are out there, these different um, uh, backdrops for where they come from, different planets or different uh, time zones or different, you know, areas of phenomena that occur to try to figure out what these things are doing. Are they sent here to monitor the planet Earth? Um, everybody ties them in with, with, the UFO phenomena, which I'm starting to actually buy off on, which I initially had no inkling. I thought, no, that's not, that's ridiculous. What would these things have to do with each other? I think that's one of the reasons that people are able to, to dismiss it so much, honestly. Because when you start talking about UFOs and then you start talking about Bigfoot, you're like, oh, come the fuck on. Oh, like, yeah. Can we just talk yeah. about, what, like, do you have to be a Bigfoot expert and be a UFO? Like, Bingo. once you do that, you're just like, that's kind of like, even me, like, you kind of like, people, like you lose me sometimes when when you talk when people talk about that like automatically if you're into ufos you you're automatically interested in bigfoot and you know all these other things and these conspiracy theories and there's, there's just a stigma to it well it sounds so funny because your whole life you're told there's no monsters you know there's nothing out there it's all safe and warm and fuzzy and then as you start to listen to some of these shows you know they start talking about um ufos and individuals being taken from their beds at night you know and having all these different uh, uh, programs and processes done to their body to figure out what's going on. And I can't believe that all these people are not being truthful. I mean, some of these people, you can go back to the 40s and 50s when there were some, a couple that was uh, taken out of New Hampshire, Betty and Barney. Um, they were a couple, black and white couple. He was black, she was white. Betty and Barney Hill. Be there you go. Yeah. And they were actually uh, uh, in, coming home one night from an event that took place. And had to run in with a UFO. Mm -hmm. And to listen to him go under uh, hypnosis, hypnosis and, and listen to him, the terror that's in his voice as he realizes that there, these are something else other than earthly entities is very real. Mm -hmm.